Okay, so now let's try a similar problem. Here, the choice of p for the invariant is not so obvious. If we just try the same as before, so what was our choice of invariant before? It was just s equals 2 to the i. So s equals 2 to the i and b, b is i less than n. Do the code s, s equals 2 to the i. If I do this and then do the while rule, my post condition is going to be of the form s equals 2 to the i and i is strictly less than n. And I'm not going to be able to uh, weaken this down to this, right? Because if you assume this, it doesn't necessarily imply that. So that means this invariant here is too weak. It's not good enough. So p equals s, uh, an invariant of s equals 2 to the i won't do. We need more stuff. So what else do we know about this bit of code? Well, the properties ought to be true um, under this constraint. So if the loop condition is true, we know i is strictly less than n, which means i is less than or equal to n. So if the code is running, then we know i is strictly less than n. So it should be the case that i is less than or equal to n afterwards, because i is only increased by 1 during the during the loop. So based on that, it seems like a good choice would be to add in i less than or equal to n because if the code runs, this condition must hold, which means this condition must hold, and after the code is run, if i was less than n before, then i should be less than or equal to n afterwards because i is only increased by 1. So we conjecture that this is a good choice for invariant. And so we can attempt now to prove this using this choice of invariant. So let me just write out p and b. So s equals 2 to the i, and i less than or equal to n, and b, i strictly less than n. The code s, i plus 1, s equals s times 2. The post condition, p. OK. So, if this is true, and I do the while rule forward on this, we're going to get s equals 2 to the i and i less than or equal to n, while b, i is strictly less than n, do the code. My post condition is p and not p. So s equals 2 to the i and i less than or equal to n, and this condition is false. So it's false to say i strictly less than n. OK? If this condition is true, can I now jump down to here? Well, let's see. If s equals 2 to the i, and i is less than or equal to n, and it's false to say that i is strictly less than n, these two conditions here imply i must be equal to n. Combined with this condition means s equals 2 to the n. So if I can prove this, I can use while rule to get this, and I can weaken the post condition to get this. Cool. So now we've got to prove this statement here. How do we prove this statement? Looks like doing sequencing backwards. Uh, we can simplify this a little bit, cleaning up the precondition with precondition equivalence, as s equals 2 to the i, and i less than or equal to n, and i strictly less than n, is the same as if you just drop this term out because it's redundant. Okay, so we can rewrite the problem in a little bit easier. What are we going to have? We're going to have just this term now. s equals 2 to the i, and i strictly less than n as our precondition. The same code. And the same post condition. And i less than equal to n. So now we want to do uh, sequencing backwards for some mysterious Q that we're yet to find out. And we'll work out what Q is in a moment. And then the same post condition. Okay, so now I've got to fill the gap and then I can go sequencing forward. So how do I get a... Um, what term is going to live over here? Well, I can just do assignment backwards. So replace the S's with S times 2's. 
sorry, S times 2 is equal to 2 to the i, and i is less than or equal to n. Copy that over here. How can we prove this condition? I guess by doing assignment rule backwards as well. So we can copy up the post. I is assigned to be I plus 1. So do assignment rule backwards. Replace the I's with I plus 1's. S times 2 equals 2 to the I plus 1. And I plus 1 strictly, uh, I plus 1 less than or equal to N. How do we get from here to here? The only way to do that is by precondition strengthening. So if I assume this to be true, S equals 2 to the I and I strictly less than N, does that imply this condition up here? <clears throat> well, it looks like it, right? Because I could take this term, multiply both sides by 2, and obtain S times 2 equals 2 to the I plus 1. And if I take this term, if I is strictly less than N, then it ought to be the case that I plus 1 is less than or equal to N. Okay? So this is true by math. Our proof is done, so we can fill in our line numbers and our justifications. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this was assignment. This was by math. This was by something. Um, Precondition strengthening. Lines 1 and 2. This was assignment. This is sequencing of 3 and 4. This was logic. Precondition equivalence of 5. Or 5 to 6, I suppose. This is the while rule of 7. And then this is going to be um, logic. And then this is post condition weakening. Using 8 and 9. And there we go. So how did I obtain my invariant? Well, I know from before that s equals 2 to the i is unchanged when I run this code snippet, right? Because we have that property from earlier. Where did I put that property from earlier? Here we are. We were given this, right? So we know s equals 2 to the i is an invariant. But unfortunately, it's not a strong enough invariant, right? Because I wouldn't be able to post condition weaken to get this property here. I needed more information. So I figured that the only time the code is run is when i is strictly less than n. So that means we can furthermore include this in the invariant because only when the, co when the code is run, this property too will be an invariant. So now I've got a stronger invariant.